this book is about uh, the history of humanism and humanists in a very broad way. I take uh, around 700 years of people who've worked in humanist thinking, humanist literature, humanist philosophy, and developed it in all sorts of ways. It's such a broad term, humanism. It can mean all a uh, huge range of things. And what I try and do in the book is slightly crazy plan to try and bring all that together into a coherent story to see how humanism has changed over the centuries, what it can mean to us, what it's meant to many other people through the years as a philosophy of living, but also as a way of life, the people who have dedicated themselves to humanities, which is also a form of humanism. And it's a very personal book for me because I have always been a humanist, though for most of my life without knowing it. It's not the kind of label that you automatically think to use of yourself. And then I realized that what humanism stands for is really what I've always believed and how I've tried to live my life, which is um, a form of living that puts human well-being and human moral connections with each other and with the world of which we're a part at the centre of our concerns and emphasises the responsibility that we have to ourselves and to each other. It's very hard to choose between my first memories of cultural experiences, such a huge part of life, culture, but um, one thing that stands out is when I was a teenager, I was a big fan of music of all kinds, and I was blown away by Rick Wakeman's concept album, uh, Journey to the Centre of the Earth, based on uh, Jules Verne's novel of that name, of course, from the 19th century. I um, have slightly changed my my enjoyment of the music I suppose I mean it's you know it is what it is it's it's fun music but what I did do recently was to return to the book and read it again for the first time since childhood and I was amazed what a fascinating tremendous curiosity about all the scientific possibilities of what might, might lie in the invisible realms under our feet but it's also a very funny book that's something that I'd completely forgotten so out of that I take a sense of the things that you read in childhood or you listen to in childhood that you might not look at again for decades and then they return to you in a different guise. In writing, the best piece of advice, and I've had some wonderful advice from, I've uh, been very lucky to have brilliant writers advising me um, at all stages and brilliant editors, I think the thing that stands out is um, somebody said to me once that if you're struggling with a book or a short piece and there's something in it that seems like the biggest problem, it's the biggest thing standing in your way, you can often get around it by turning that problem into a focus in the book itself, making it at the heart of the book, actually maybe being talking openly about why it's a problem, why it's something that... Uh, needs to be sorted out and but also just you can turn it right around and make it into something that's at the heart of the book and I've tried that a few times it seems to work very often and I suppose you could extend that to to life perhaps but I haven't really thought that one through but it could it could be more than good writing advice possibly I uh, am kept up at night by quite a few things that that worry me these days I never used to I used to just sleep through like some sort of innocent uh, now I find of course I worry about the state of the world the fears of war and and environmental devastation and like everybody else I think one is so much more aware of those things I can also be kept up awake by the most idiotic things like um suddenly realizing that I've got to make a an orange polenta cake uh, the next day and I haven't got the ingredient for it or you know I'm not sure quite I can't remember how to do it um it's just yeah I try and find all sorts of means to um not to forget the problems of the world but to try and just keep I suppose as Voltaire once said we must cultivate our garden we can't necessarily take the cosmic view of everything but uh just concentrate on what we can do something about. 
there are many things that make me hopeful. And writing about humanism is a help in this because it reminds us of the few of the things that we do do well, along with all the things that we do very badly and the things where we don't live up to our own ideals and we make a mess of, of things around us, of course. Then at the same time, we have these real abilities on our side. One of them is we're incredibly ingenious animals when it comes to devising tools, technologies, solutions to problems. This is what distinguishes us more than anything as a species, that we're great problem solvers. And I think that uh, we need to use that to our utmost and to recognize that it is uh, our friend. The other thing is we're probably better than we think we are at collaborating with each other and working out the human side of this, working out political solutions, working out ways of resolving uh, challenges, using our tremendous social skills, which again are very strong in us as a species. So those things give me hope. They definitely give me some hope and help me to not to lose all of my sleep at night.